What's going on, Wastelanders? Draco Invictus here for the Fallout 4 Builder Basics for your settlement. If you're new to the game or new to the settlements, maybe you didn't want to dive into them, you didn't understand it or something like that, this is the place to come to. Uh, we're going to start with the structures and the wood structures, and we're going to cover today the prefabs, floors, and walls located in those categories. And so let's run over here real quick. We're gonna start with the prefabs. I don't use a whole lot of prefabs because uh, ultimately when you snap them together, it looks like a Roman bathhouse, you know, lots of columns everywhere. Now on occasion, I will use a, a single or maybe one or two pieces uh, as part of a larger structure. Uh, they certainly well, work well for that. Or if you're just doing little one-offs, this would be great for like a stall for a vendor or something like that. Um, without a whole lot of you know work on your part that's what the prefabs are for uh, you can see here I, I snapped together a hallway prefab uh, with an end cap prefab uh, to create a nice cozy little area there so you can certainly use those uh, in your buildings or not at all I mean you can certainly do everything that they they are doing here on your own uh, just like this this is just an open uh, prefab with uh, a couple walls already on it. Uh, this one is using a shack wall with roof already on it. Uh, this one's using a couple shack walls with roofs and a uh, corner cap. So uh, yeah, th these can all be built with all these materials out here. Now um, they have a, a small building that you could just drop down and you could certainly fit several sleeping bags in here and uh, maybe a couple chairs uh, certainly good enough for your settlers all they care is that they have a roof over their heads now this one here this big old behemoth let's um i i know i can't make that jump up in there so let's move this to a place where i can come on there's lots of skeletons and stuff sitting around okay let's uh, wait go back there all right, you can see that Bethesda uses a lot of different walls, a lot of different railings. Um, I tend to build the same way. Um, my first run through, I used all the same walls and it looked kind of boring. And I wanted something that Bethesda would build. I wanted to fit in the Bethesda universe. And this prefab is a great example of that. You could, you know, fit a ton of stuff in here. You could put a single bed right here in this section or you could put a couple sleeping bags running this way. Uh, you could fit 10 or 12 people in here easily, have two of these on your settlement and be done if you wanted to. Uh, let's move this back out of the way and um, because we will reference it later. And of course, because it's so big, it doesn't want to fit anywhere. And this is a problem that you're going to run into with your settlements. Come on, I had there it is, good enough. All right, so now let's run over to the individual pieces not the skeletons uh, this is uh, under floors this is a shack floor it requires eight wood two steel the one next to it uh, is also just a shack floor it requires seven wood two steel so if you're looking to conserve resources you save one wood by building this one over that one um, I mix and match the two because if you go with all these it looks like you ran to some home building center and um, and grabbed a bunch of lumber and and w you're in the apocalypse, people. You know, sometimes you just got to throw down some, uh, some plywood on a frame and call it a floor. So I mix and match them. I spin them around so they're all not running the same direction. Uh, unless I'm doing something specific, maybe I'm doing a wall or something like that where I want all the slats running the same direction, then I might do that. Uh, the next piece that we have is the shack foundation. I call it the block because it's just a big old piece of concrete uh, with a shack floor attached to the top. And it will sink as low as that shack floor is not in the ground for the one that you first set up. Now, if I grabbed a second one, I could actually snap it so that it would actually go into the ground because of the change in elevation. But the initial one that you set, and I won't be able to set another one. See, it won't let me set it. It's snapping it there, but it won't let me set it uh, because it, it would all be underground essentially. And they see no use for that. So the first one, none of the wood can go underground. The second one can go under the ground. Uh, and you might be able to get a third one depending on how, how your elevation is. But these work great. You'll see a lot of guys building entire settlements 
Uh, all their exterior walls to protect their settlements are made out of these stacked like three or four high. There's some guys out there that built like 20 story uh, settlements all enclosed and use these as their walls. You can't do that here at the drive-in. Um, I think the cap is like four stories here. Uh, but there is a farm where at the high end of the elevation, you can get 20 floors. And at the low end, you can get 23. So keep that in mind as you're building uh, to check how far high, how high you can build. Right next to that, also called the Shack Foundation, I call it the Piers. It snaps uh, to the, uh, the block just as well. Uh, it also sinks into the ground. It has the same kind of functionality as the, uh, the brick did. You see this one's slightly under the ground. Um, so yeah, you can interchange them. Uh, if you watched my uh, guard tower build at the castle, I use these exclusively to build a three-story guard tower uh, that is 12-sided, and it's pretty impressive. So if you haven't seen that, make sure to check out that video. Uh, right next to that is the shack stairwell. Obviously, it takes you from one floor to another, but these also have another special feature. Let's flip this out of the way. Uh, if I wanted to put these piers on top of this brick, on top of the cube, I could. Okay, that looks pretty decent there. Maybe a little bit more in this corner. Okay, so we come back and look, and you know what? I actually did a pretty good job this time. That isn't always going to happen. One way to ensure that it's square, that this piece is square with this piece, is to use the shack stairwell snap it to the bottom one that you're trying to work on and then grab the top one and it will snap to the top floor obviously there's a, a appears to be a little bit of a gap there you could actually if you fidgeted with enough you could get it to a, see look there it's perfect and you could that's how you could stack these and this is the most this is the way that most people will use this. A lot of people didn't know about it and they were manually stacking three and four stories even higher and uh, just by eye. And that could, if you get off by one, then you're off by the other and it gets to be a mess. So use this to be your ruler when you're stacking stuff more than one story. It will come in handy. Next, we have the shack upper floor. Notice it's thicker like that is like one there's like twice and if we come grab one of these and we snap it onto this double floor here we can see the difference between the two the big thing that these are used for obviously is for your upper floors and the reason for that is if we grab a wall and the wall snaps up to the top just like it snaps on here the difference is, is the upper floor allows me to sta uh, snap a wall to the bottom of it. I can't do that with this. This will, th I could use this as an upper floor, but the problem is, is as soon as I grab this wall and go to snap it to it, it won't snap. That's why we have the upper floors. Now you could use the upper floors as your regular flooring. That is certainly okay. And I have definitely done that in the past. Um, and this is the only variation of it. Um, but its best part is that it creates a thick floor that you can snap top and bottom to. And I've also used them as roofs uh, when I'm doing guard posts or guard towers on top of a structure. Uh, you know, like up here, you know, they have all the pitches and stuff like that. Well, it's kind of hard to put a guard tower flat when you're dealing with a pitched roof. So use the shack upper floor as your roof as well. That moves us on to the, the singles, the one by ones. Um, they're over here at the, the end of the, uh, that's walls, floors, there we go. Um, they are over here at the end of the list. And the big difference is they're, they're all the same size, except some of them are slightly thicker. This one is slightly thicker than that one. You can see how there's a, just a hair taller. And um, sometimes this one, won't snap this one won't snap they're the same thickness this one will snap for whatever reason that little couple millimeters or whatever it is is just enough to get this floor to snap where this one wouldn't it's i've only run into it twice um and i was doing a build at the time but uh but yeah 
If you can't get this one to snap, try one of these just to make sure. So that's going to do it for flooring. Let's move on to walls. This is our basic shack wall. It's the first one that you find uh, when you go into the wall section. So we come over here. This is the first one that we find. And this is what I built all my houses out of, my first run through, all of them. But then as I started looking at them, I realized that, you know, obviously the, the hole patterns are the same, you know, for each piece. And it, the repetition isn't something that you see in that. So this go around, I started building a lot more like that and a lot less like this. These are great walls, uh, very versatile. Uh, they're not the thinnest wall. We'll get to thin walls in a minute, uh, but this is a good standard wall. Uh, it will snap where some walls simply won't. Uh, next, we have the shack wall doorway. It snaps to walls, and you'll see that it actually sticks out a little bit further because it has this cap where, where it bends out. And if I grab, come over here and grab this floor, set that down. The difference is most walls snap onto a floor. This snaps to the front of the floor, not sitting on top of it. So if I grab this wall, we'll see that it's actually sitting on top of the floor. This is sitting in front of the floor, which is why we can't then grab this piece and put it here. It won't snap. It will not, see it keeps wanting to snap in the back. It won't snap there. But we can grab one of these singles and it'll snap to the doorway. And then we can build a porch or do whatever, whatever we wanted to from that point. But you won't be able to snap a double to the front face of the doorway. You have to go with singles. Uh, this is a outer cap. I love these walls. These are some of my favorite walls. Uh, this is the Bethesda look that I've been talking about. Uh, the wall's not perfectly straight up and down. It kind of bows out a little bit. Uh, there are several variations of this kind of outer cap wall. And um, they are just, they, I want to say pretty. I know that they're all, ugly. I mean, all of this is ugly, you know, but as far as the, the Bethesda universe goes, these are beautiful walls. Uh, right next to it, we have a wall corner. And if you notice, both of these walls are cap walls. But if I had two singular cap walls like this one, I couldn't make this because this corner, they would intersect. They would be clipping each other and they just won't go. See how the, it sticks out at the top there? So this is a great use when you're trying to put in right corners where on the inside of your house, you know, you come in through your doorway, you're walking, you have a little bedroom or eating area or kitchen or whatever over here, and you need to make that right-hand turn, but you want to keep using the cap walls because they're so cool looking. This is how you do that. Next, we have the shack wall corners. And these aren't going here. They will. I mean, they won't snap, but uh, you could certainly use them next to that. What they're used for is to snap onto, let's grab this one here since it's in the front, onto the shack wall and roof. There are about eight or 10 variations of this. I've laid out a few of them here. Um, there are also eight or 10 variations of the shack wall and roof. Again, if you saw my uh, guard tower series or video, then I made extensive use of these and um, I didn't use any of these corners. Uh, I went with another direction for that. But these work well uh, for creating more of an alcove look. Or you could connect them, you know, go with the, the empty one here and, it, you know, have it snap on. And then we could grab this one and make this corner here. So now we've made that corner. And uh, you could put railings up to, to protect you guys. Even though their AI will not let them walk off of this. Just for aesthetics, you'd probably want to put up some railing there. But that's just me. All right, so that is a shack wall and roof, and these look great. Uh, let's see if I can uh, come over here. I don't have a wall up there or, or a floor or anything, but you can see I can actually set that up on top of the, the, the restaurant for the drive-in. And you can set them back, you know, far enough out, far enough that it's okay that they don't have support underneath them. You know, we've all seen balconies that hang out from the, the edge of a, a home or something like that where it doesn't have any columns or anything holding it up. 
And Bethesda even kind of uses that, you know, over here a little bit uh, in that prefab. So you could certainly have those hanging out over the edge on a second or third story and uh, give some good dimension to your home. All right, these two panels here, um, I used to close gaps. That's, uh, that's what I use them for. So super mutants could, couldn't get in there or raiders or whatever. Um, it took me about a month to figure out what they were actually for. And uh, I feel kind of stupid admitting that, but that's all right. Uh, these are actually caps for our wall with roof. They snap right into place. So if I grab this one, it'll snap right there. So then you create like a more dedicated space just within that wall and roof. Uh, now, of course, you can still use them, you know, to close those gaps and stuff like that. Uh, they certainly work for it. Um, they're perfectly fine. But this was their actual intended use. So uh, have fun with those. Now, let's talk about wall thickness. You can see the thickness of this wall versus the thickness of this wall. Sometimes this wall will not fit. You need to use a wall like this or like this one's you know, really thin as well. I use this wall all the time, especially when you're doing stuff that's not quite right angles. Um, now, of course, it'll snap to any other wall, but, um, but when you're doing some, some difficult angles or trying to cut something off, uh, the thinner wall may be your better bet. These are a couple more examples of the cap walls. Um, and as you can see, they, they all snap together as well. But trying to make that right hand corner, like that corner piece over there, just not gonna do it because it's clipping up at the top. And of course the bow outward is uh, stopping that from clipping together. But they'll click side to side. And of course you could also go this way with it. Uh, now, here's an easy trick if you want this to be at a right angle. Come over here, grab a floor, not a double, we don't need a double. Snap the floor there, then take this wall and it will snap to the floor. Now we've created our interior right angle with the two cap walls. And otherwise, if you take the floor out, it's gonna wanna snap straight. It's not gonna wanna make that right hand turn. So you use the floor to be your guide and that thing will snap right into place. All right, guys, that's going to do it for uh, our wood structures, uh, for prefabs, floors, and walls. In the next video, I'm gonna talk about roofs, stairs, and miscellaneous. Until then, uh, Wastelanders, hang out and uh, be safe out there.